Welcome back here with Newsday. Returning now to our coverage of the budget. Senior advocates are calling for changes to the retirement income system, recommending work income to be exempted from the government payment income test to boost workforce participation and savings. Joining us live with more is Ian Henschke, his Chief Advocate for National Seniors Australia. Ian, always appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us. Just how life-changing would that change be for old Australians if we, we saw that sort of thing, exemptions of work income for the income test for all government payments and realistically what are you expecting in the budget papers on the front tonight? Well, I hope the government does listen because uh, what we're seeing now is a massive shortage of workers. I think it's 438,000 workers. And we had Deloitte do some modelling, which I've got in my hand here, and I've been taking it around Parliament House this morning. And, and in that modelling, it actually says, and I quote directly from this, if the initiative was confined to the healthcare and social assistance sector, there would be a boost to the workforce of 25,000 at no cost to government. If they did it across the whole sector, 209,000 additional workers and you would get a boost to fiscal aggregates. In other words, you would make money from the policy. This is Deloitte doing this work for us. Um, we commissioned them to do it and, of course, it shows that this policy will work. So when you've got a government saying that they're worried about the future, uh, the future surpluses, etc., we've now been able to prove economically that the policy works. We are being told, Ian, that there will be cost of living relief. What other forms are you expecting that could come in for older Australians? We seem to be getting a, a few heavy hints that we'll be seeing something on helping Australians with rent tonight. Do you expect some movement there when it comes to rent assistance for seniors? Well, I think rent assistance across the board needs to be looked at. Commonwealth rent assistance hasn't been keeping up with the higher costs of rent and uh, one of the biggest predictions of living in poverty is if you are renting and you're on fixed income, such as a pension. So I think that really needs to be looked at. And more and more Australians are reaching pension age either still uh, renting or they've got very high uh, mortgage payments and some of them are actually uh, then not being able to keep up with those when they get to pension age. So I think that's an important area. The other thing that we're hearing is that there's likely to be an increase in the job seeker payment for people over 55. National Senior says that's almost... Uh, I mean, it's good for those people to get a little bit of a boost, but what we should be looking at is uh, training people who are over 55 to take up some of these jobs I mentioned before, 438,000 jobs. And we've suggested a mature age traineeship program be rolled out across Australia. Uh, some of the areas where we desperately need workers are in the... Uh, rural industries, uh, you also need workers in tourism and hospitality and of course aged care, home care, child care, disability care. So I would like the government to consider some of the proposals we've put in our budget submission and that mature age traineeship program I think is one that has to be done rather than saying look here's some extra money while you're on JobKeeper it would be better to say here's some traineeship programs that we would like to get you into uh, work. And, and of course um, there's a lot of discrimination against older Australians, but in those sectors we've mentioned just then, childcare, aged care, home care, disability care, uh, older workers often become some of the best workers in that area. So I think the traineeship program is a good one and we've put that on our budget submission. And we saw that historic announcement just last week about lifting wages for aged care workers. What else are you expecting in the aged care sector tonight? We have already seen a, a number of reforms in recent years. Well, one of the things that uh, we've talked about for a number of years now is the need to provide more home care packages because more and more people are saying they want to stay in their own home rather than go into an aged care home. Uh, there are still people waiting for a home care package, so we'd like to see some relief there. But we really welcome the increase in wages uh, because I think that's an important signal that's being sent to the uh, care worker community uh, that we do value you uh, because those wages were so low. I mean, uh, in some states, they were around the $21 or $22 an hour and you could get more uh, pay working in retail than you would working in uh, the care industries where you're actually dealing with the most frail and vulnerable. So that 15% uh, wage rise is actually a good one. Um, and, of course, the care workers are saying they deserve a 25% pay rise. So we hope that that's the first step to increase that sector. 
Uh, and if you look at the number of workers that we're going to need over the next 20 and 30 years, uh, the previous Minister for Aged Care, Ken Wyatt, addressed the National Press Club uh, a few years ago and he said we're going to need an extra 360,000 workers over the next uh, 25 years. So, I mean, you're talking about tens of thousands of workers and they won't all be able to be filled by migration. That brings us back to the National Seniors Policy. Let the pensioners work. When people get to 67 years of age, let them continue on in those jobs, let them have the pension and then simply pay income tax on their total earnings. It's a simple system and we believe it will work. And as I said, Deloitte's have given it the, the stamp. They've given it the roadworthy certificate. So I think we can actually get some action here. I hope Jim Chalmers listens to us. And if he doesn't tonight, there is an employment white paper coming out in November. And perhaps that's the time to bring it in if he doesn't do it tonight. Yeah, there are huge challenges, no doubt about it. Ian Hedgeke, really appreciate you taking the time to join us. We'll let you go and get ready for a big afternoon ahead of poring over budget papers. Thanks so much.